Judgment in the matter of O'Connor versus Bar Standards Board. Lord Lloyd Jones will explain the decision of the court. Ms. O'Connor, the appellant, is a practicing barrister and is black. She alleges that the Bar Standards Board, the respondent, discriminated against her on grounds of her race by bringing disciplinary proceedings which ended in her acquittal on appeal. On the 9th of June 2010, the Bar Standards Board's Complaints Committee brought six disciplinary charges against the appellant. On the 23rd of May 2011, the disciplinary tribunal found five of these charges proved. The appellant appealed to the visitors of the Inns of Court, and on the 17th of August 2012, her appeal was allowed on the basis that none of the alleged conduct involved any breach of the Bar Code of Conduct. On the 21st of February 2013, the appellant issued the present proceedings, which included an allegation of violation of Article 14 of the European Convention on Human Rights, read in conjunction with Article 6, contrary to Section 6 of the Human Rights Act 1998. The Bar Standards Board maintained that this claim was time-barred under Section 7, subsection 5A of the 1998 Act, which provides that proceedings must be brought before the end of the period of one year beginning with the date on which the act complained of took place. The Bar Standards Board applied for an order that the statement of case be struck out on the basis that none of the appellant's claims had a real prospect of success and that in any event there was a complete defense under section 7, subsection 5A. The master struck out the claim. On appeal, Mr. Justice Warby held that there was a sufficiently pleaded case that the Bar Standards Board indirectly discriminated against the appellant However, he also held that the claim was time-barred under Section 7, subsection 5A of the 1998 Act. The appellant appealed to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal held that the limitation period under Section 7, subsection 5A had started to run on the 23rd of May 2011, when the disciplinary tribunal had found the charges against the appellant proved, and so had expired before she had issued her claim on the 21st of February 2013. On appeal to the Supreme Court, the issues were, first, whether the disciplinary proceedings against the appellant were to be considered a series of discrete acts or a single continuing act, and secondly, if the latter, did that act end with the verdict of the disciplinary tribunal or with the verdict of the visitors? The Supreme Court unanimously allows the appeal. Ms. O'Connor's discrimination claim is a challenge to the conduct of the Bar Standards Board in bringing and pursuing disciplinary proceedings against her. In applying Section 7, subsection 5b, it is therefore necessary to consider whether the bringing of disciplinary proceedings is to be considered a series of discrete acts or a single continuous act. The Court considers that Section 7, subsection 5a should not be read narrowly and must be capable of providing an effective and workable rule for situations where the infringement of a convention right arises from a course of conduct. The alleged infringement of convention rights in this case arose from a single continuous course of conduct. The essence of the complaint made by the appellant is the initiation and pursuit of the proceedings to their conclusion. Furthermore, the Supreme Court considers that under Section 7, Subsection 5a, time begins to run from the date when the continuing act ceased, not when it began. In determining whether the continuing act ceased, it was necessary to consider whether the Bar Standards Board's conduct in proceedings before the visitors should be considered as forming part of the same continuing act as its conduct in proceedings before the disciplinary tribunal. In order to answer that question, it was necessary to consider the nature of the regulatory scheme and the precise features of the Bar Standards Board's conduct. Several features of the regulatory scheme and the visitors' jurisdiction led the Supreme Court to the conclusion that the Bar Standards Board's part in the proceedings before the disciplinary tribunal and those before the visitors should be regarded as part of a single continuing act. Therefore, the single continuing act in this case continued until the visitors allowed the appellant's appeal on the 17th of August 2012. The appellant commenced the present proceedings on the 21st of February 2013 within the period of one year beginning with the date on which the act complained of took place as required by Section 7, Subsection 5a, and the appeal should accordingly be allowed. The Supreme Court also rejects a submission by the Bar Standards Board that it should uphold the decision of the Court of Appeal on the alternative ground that Mr Justice Warby was wrong to hold that the claim of indirect discrimination under Article 14 
had a real prospect of success.